All right, what's going on, Wheeltube? We're back, but we're doing a different video today. We got a six inch Schedule 40 carbon pipe, but we're gonna be welding it with a flux coated TIG wire. This is a 316 um, flux coated TIG wire, also known as dirty wire on the field. We're gonna be welding this uh, pipe with no purge. All right, we're gonna uh, talk about when to use it and how we use it. But before we start, I wanna give a shout out to Paul Theory and the boys out there in turn two using this bad boy. All right guys, so like we said, um, we have a carbon pipe, but a stainless steel uh, wire. Usually when you're using that, uh, you know you're gonna purge the stainless, but this actually has a coating on it that actually acts as the argon and as the gas as it burns. So right here we have three uh, penetrator tags, that's what I like. I got the open side here as I weld up, it's gonna pull that side, but this is a 1 8 uh, 3 16 wire. So we got a um, 1 8 wire with a 3 16 gap. That's usually what I like. I could weld that a little bigger, but I'm just gonna back feed it from the top. Same thing as carbon. It's really no difference, but it is to the unexperienced eye, the puddle is a little bit different. That's why they call it dirty wire. You see a lot of things in that puddle, but it's, it's really the same uh, concept. So let's go ahead and get into it. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> All right, guys, so like I said, I'm just gonna back feed it here from the top. I'm gonna light up, wash my keyhole. I'm gonna put the rod into the puddle, let that flux burn, and I'm just gonna weld it like normal. So here we go. So I'm burning about a, a 105 amps, a little more, give or take. Just burn a little bit hotter so that I can burn all that flux off. But it's really no different. So when, uh, when I'm doing the root, what I normally do, like I said, I just back feed, but I continuously push. Especially with this rod, I don't want to be, you know, disconnecting a whole lot. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you disconnect a lot, but just try to keep that rod in there. Keep pushing and pushing it. And one thing too, don't force it. Remember, you have to burn all of that um, slag off of the rod as well as the rod. So you can't just keep, um, forcing that rod in there, you'll get a bunch of co-wire and you'll get real heavy. So that's just what I do. Keep feeding it normally. Now, like we said, you use this rod when there's no way to really purge a pipe, like say final tie-ins or you're just too far down the line, you can't get a good purge, can't run hoses through it. We're gonna use this rod. Like I said, the, the coating on this rod acts as the argon or the protecting gas. Kind of like a 7018 rod or stick rod. Now, when you're done welding, this rod leaves a slag like 7018 or 6010, whatever, stick rod. And you just wire wheel it off and it'll uh, Show that nice shiny stainless. If you can hear it, it, it'll be popping and stuff. That's the flux popping off. Like I said, it's really no different once you get it going. Pretty simple. One thing about my hand too is I just go up and down. I mean, normal, just like if I was welding carbon or stainless on schedule 40, whatever it may be, schedule 80, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing, just up and down. The movement is the same. Like I said, I mean, to the untrained eye, this rod burns a little different. You know, the puddle is, a, is it, it is a little different. It's not as clean as a regular stainless would be, but I mean, that's all right. As long as you're moving it up and down, you're watching the rod flow. That's the main thing I'm looking at is the melt, the rod melting through the flux. That's what I want to see. And that's how I know that I'm getting a good penetration. And just make sure that you see that keyhole as you're going up and down, letting you know that you're burning those walls out. So it's like the same thing as carbon or stainless on schedule 40.
I had started the bottom about 110. Um, I started to go down a little bit because it does get hotter as you go up and it tends to get a little heavier. I try to avoid that problem. But I like to start a little bit hotter on the bottom. But I just fluctuate between 100 and 110. I mean, whatever you guys like. I, I personally like a bigger gap, so I, I can't weld that hot. I can't weld. I know some of these guys weld 120, you know, 130. I've seen it, but I I like a bigger gap, 316, maybe a little bigger. It just depends. So I'm limited, but you can go wherever you want to go. The gap, like I said, 316 amps, 100 or about 110. So for this video, guys, uh, we're only doing the root pass just to showcase this rod. I mean. To, to some of you guys, like I said, the guys out there turn two, uh, fall theory, this may just be nothing new, but to some of these other guys never welded, stuff like that, I mean, it's just to showcase the rod, see what it looks like, just to get a, you know, hands-on on it. But today we're just gonna do the root pass. With this rod, I don't want to be, you know, disconnecting a whole lot. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you disconnect a lot, but just try to keep that rod in there. Keep pushing and pushing it. And one thing too, don't force it. Remember, you have to burn all of that uh, back off of the rod as well as the rod. So you can't just keep uh, forcing that rod in there. You'll get a bunch of full wire and you'll get real heavy. One thing about my hand too is I just go up and down. I mean normal, just like if I was welding carbon or stainless on schedule 40, whatever it may be, schedule 80, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing, just up and down. The movement is the same. Like I said, I mean to the untrained eye, this rod burns a little different. You know, the puddle is, a, is it, it is a little different. It's not as clean as a regular stainless would be, but I mean that's all right. As long as you're moving it up and down, you're watching the rod below. That's the main thing I'm looking at is the, melt, the rod melting through the flux. All right guys, there you have it. A six inch schedule 40 rooted up with a 316 um, flux coated TIG wire, AKA a dirty rod. And uh, remember these, these rods aren't used all the time. They're just really used when a purge is not available. Like I said, final tie-ins or just a, a, a big long line where you can't really run argon through there. So. That's it. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Boom.